Hello, good afternoon guys. Welcome back to AdLib Talk. And first things first, today we're going to be talking about the Game Awards, 2020 Game Awards, which took place last night. Um, I think there were some controversial decisions. I haven't seen everything, but I have seen the main awards and I know there's the main award right now on screen in a little bit, just one second. There we go. So this is the main one, right? Very controversial decision. Gaming of the year went to The Last of Us 2. So let's talk about it. So I played Last of Us 2 from this list. I played Ghost of Tsushima. I played Doom Eternal from this list. And I played a little bit of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And if I have to be honest, I do not think The Last of Us Part 2 should have been awarded the game of the year. Um, and there are a number of reasons. So, The Last of Us Part 2, it wasn't a bad game. Okay, it wasn't a bad game. In fact, my, my review, I think I gave it a 4 out of 5. Yes, it must have been a 4 out of 5. So, I'm not saying The Last of Us 2 was a bad game. And I can understand why they awarded it Game of the Year. So, the visuals were absolutely spectacular. Out of this world visuals, the game design, the, the, the map design, the the zombies you fight against, everything was brilliant, right? That, that part I can understand. But the gameplay was quite average, to be honest. There was nothing too spectacular about the gameplay. It was gameplay taken straight out of the first game uh, with a few upgrades here and there, but really nothing spectacular. And when you play a game, yes, the story is important, the visuals, the characters are important, uh, the music is important, but at the end of the day, you play a game for its gameplay. And honestly, honestly, the gameplay in The Last of Us Part 2 just wasn't up to scratch when you compare it to its competitors. So that's The Last of Us Part 2. Which game did I think should have won this? So, I mean, if you look at the gameplay, right? Yeah, the gameplay was good. I'm not saying the gameplay was bad. It was actually very good. I enjoyed it very much. But when you compare it to a game like Ghost of Tsushima and just how good the gameplay in Ghost of Tsushima was, um, there was a big difference, in my opinion, of quality. Why do I think Ghost of Tsushima deserved the win? So Ghost of Tsushima, the visuals were just as spectacular as for um, The Last of Us Part Two. the game design, the map was spectacular, brilliantly designed, truly a spectacular thing. Um, I thought the game had uh, absolutely fantastic combat. The combat, no, I mean, yes, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, but we can skip this for now. <laughs> so the game had absolutely spectacular gameplay. The combat system was really refined. It felt almost like every single fight that you had was scripted but you know it wasn't because it's an open world game uh so i think on that aspect alone ghost of tsushima deserved it over the loss of us part two but where i felt ghost of tsushima definitely deserved it was because loss of us part two had a good story it had a good story and the storytelling was really good but Ghost of Tsushima's cinematic storytelling and the emotional bond you build with the character of Jin Sekai was just out of this world, not even comparable to The Last of Us Part Two. Now, this is one man's opinion, of course, but there we go. There you have it. So I think from all the games, of course, I cannot comment about Hades and I cannot comment about Animal Crossing because I did not play those two games. But in my opinion... The game of the year should have been Ghost of Tsushima. Doom Eternal was fun. Very, very fun game, mind you. And uh, it's a must play for anyone who loves uh, single player first person shooters. It's fast paced. Graphics are brilliant. The combat is so satisfying. But I mean, when compared to a game like Ghost of Tsushima or Last of Us, it can't compete in my opinion. Final Fantasy VII, I played a little bit. Um, but just a small part of the game. I didn't, couldn't get into it, honestly, so I really can't comment about it. Hades, 
recommended by a lot of people to be honest but still i don't think hades um really can compete with games like ghosts of shima and last of us part 2 animal crossing i know it's loved by many but can Animal Crossing again compete with these two games? I don't know. But definitely from what I've played here, Ghost of Tsushima should have won Game of the Year, in my opinion, of course. And those are some of the reasons why. Now, moving on in the categories, Best Game Direction. Again, I mean, if you give Best Game... If you give Best Game to one, usually you give Best Game Direction to the other. But, I mean, Neil Druckmann is obviously a big celebrity, a big hit amongst many of the game journalists. So there is that. Um, Half-Life Alex, I haven't played because I do not have VR. Um, but again, I think game direction, I can understand if The Last of Us Part Two got game direction. Uh, I would have understood that completely. So, best narrative. This is where I definitely disagree. Uh, I think Ghost of Tsushima deserves the best narrative. The storytelling and the cinematic way in which it was told was absolutely stunning. Really no comparison between Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us Part II. Um, yes, The Last of Us Part II had a good story and good interesting characters, but the side characters in The Last of Us Part II were very weak and very underdeveloped when compared to the characters in Ghost of Tsushima, who had much more development and were made much, felt much more real, in my opinion, even though it's a story from hundreds, hundreds of years ago. Um, so I disagree completely with this category. Best art direction. Now this is weird because even though I love the art design and animations in Ghost of Tsushima, I honestly, honestly believe that visually and artistically, The Last of Us Part Two was a more beautiful game than Ghost of Tsushima. And I'm going to explain why. So. Ghost of Tsushima used colors very well, right, in its game. I mean, all I have to do is show you the opening scene. Uh, the colors used in the game, brilliant. So, back to the discussion. Um, the colors used in Ghost of Tsushima were brilliantly done. And every color representing an element of what you're expected in the game. For example, you see the flames, the red flames, represents a village which needs saving or which you need to attack um so i absolutely love as well as the flowers uh, there were many times when you're meant to find a certain person or a certain place according to the colors of the flowers which really worked well so artistically ghost of tsushima was a beautiful game but I'll, I'll be honest, I was really impressed by the visual design of the world of last of us part two so funnily enough again i disagree with the decision here um, I think Last of Us Part Two should have won that. Best score in music. So, Doom Eternal, in my opinion, had some of the best music ever. I understand Final Fantasy had some of the best music in games. I really can't comment about this because, like I said, I only played a small part of it. Last of Us Part Two also had brilliant soundtrack by Gustavo Santa Tarala. Santa Lala. What a name, geez. Um by Gustavo, so that was a very good soundtrack. Um, but Doom Eternal, brilliant music, I think Doom Eternal, in my opinion, should have won that. Best audio design, I can't disagree with this, Last of Us Part Two had some of the best audio design I've ever experienced in a game, especially the sounds for the zombies in that game was absolutely spectacular, the clickers especially haunt my dreams till today. Um, Ghost of Tsushima had decent audio design, but I don't think it can compete with Last of Us Part 2. Doom Eternal probably could have competed with Last of Us uh, Part 2 because the guns just sound so good and the music is so great, so well mixed into the whole thing. But I understand completely why The Last of Us Part 2 won that. So, best performance, another controversial decision. Uh, Laura, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me switch off notifications. Notifications off. Okay, so best performance. So 
Naji Jeter, I did not play it. I did watch the gameplay, however. He sounded weird. I really don't get why he was nominated for this. Uh, again, Hades, I didn't play, so I can't comment. Uh, Jinsekai. Okay, so this is weird because I did build an emotional connection with the character, but I felt the performance did feel a little flat in the game. So I understand why uh, Daisuke Tsuji did not win this. Um, Ashley Johnson, if it's between Ashley Johnson and Laura Bailey, I mean, my favorite character is Ellie any time of the day. Um, so in my opinion, Ashley Johnson any time of the day the performance she gives is just brilliant i couldn't for the not possible in my opinion to ever love abby as a character for what she did in game um but ellie herself was a character with whom i've really felt a connection with in game uh, in the first game we had joel of course uh, we barely see Joel in the second game, and we barely get to play as him in the second game. So if there's no Joel, I would go for Ellie. As a performance overall, I wasn't impressed by Laura Bailey's, but there you go. Another one I disagree with. Games for impact. For a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message, I haven't played any of these games. I cannot comment. Best ongoing. All right. So I've played one, two, three, four of these games. Five, actually. I did play a bit of Apex Legends, but just a little bit. I did play quite a bit of Fortnite on my Nintendo Switch. Not enough to honestly give a, any meaningful comments. I have definitely played quite a bit of Call of Duty Warzone. Um, but I will definitely agree that Warzone and ongoing content are just horrible. The game is brilliant, well designed, in a sense that you've got a, you know, quite a beautiful map, very varied, but it's just the same thing over and over again. It's an addictive game, the gameplay is very good, there's a social aspect of it which is very good, but let's be honest, um, they do struggle to bring out new content. Uh, when compared to something like Fortnite, for example, which I used to play for a while back on my Nintendo Switch, but from what I hear other players say, uh, Fortnite, the sort of the updates that they get in Fortnite are, are much more uh, consistent when compared to Call of Duty. Destiny 2, I played it for a while. I played it for like two, three months c consistently, playing also quite a bit of online on Destiny 2. I enjoyed it. Um, I know there are a lot of updates for it. No Man's Sky, I played it when it came out and never vowed to never touch it again. I know it has had a lot of updates. Hello Games have done a fantastic job on it um, and I think this is well deserved to be honest. All right, best indie. I don't really have the time to play indie games so I'm sure Hades deserves it completely however from what I've heard. Best mobile game. I mean, Among Us has been a massive hit. There goes my headset batteries. So Among Us has been a massive hit in game amongst many people, to be honest. So I think Among Us deserves this completely. Best community support. Hmm. So recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency and responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity and game updates, patches. So, I mean, yeah, Fallout, Fall, Fall Guys, sorry, not Fallout. I think Fall Guys deserves this completely. I think the amount of updates and the sort of the community that was built on Twitter for this game was absolutely splendid. Um, it feels like a dead game now because there are very few um, uh, meaningful updates. There were a lot of small updates, but very few meaningful updates, I think, which has led to this game now dying out a little in popularity. In fact, I barely see any streamers play this game anymore. Among Us has taken over from Four Guys. VR I do not play, so I skip. Innovation and accessibility, I'm sure, yeah, The Last of Us Part 2 should win this. Uh, the amount of accessibility in Last of Us Part 2 was 
out of this world. Really, really well done on that element. Best action. Hades. Um, so I would say Neo 2. Fantastic game. A very, very good action. I played it. Very, very good game. Um, but Doom Eternal was brilliant. Uh, I haven't played Hades, so I can't comment about it. But I've heard, heard that it is one amazing action game. So don't know if it's deserved or not. But definitely I can say that Doom Eternal was out of this world when it comes to just pure action, pure fighting, first-person shooter. Best action adventure. Now, this is something I definitely disagree with. The Last of Us Part Two was more of a movie than a game, in my opinion. Um, even something like uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, in my opinion, deserved this much more than Last of Us Part Two. The action itself in The Last of Us Part Two was probably its weakest element, um, apart from the some parts of the storytelling. But overall, I think um, that uh, this should have gone to, definitely not to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's a good game, but nothing out of this world. So I think it should have gone either to Ghost of Tsushima or to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Two very good action games. Just when you're focusing just on the element of action, the combat, traversal and puzzle solving, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Ghost of Tsushima are an other world when compared to The Last of Us Part Two for that element only. Role-playing. I have not played any of these games, so I cannot comment. Best fighting. I do not play fighting games, so not for me. Best family games. I do not play family games, so it's not for me. Best sim strategy. I used to play a lot of strategy games in the past. Not anymore. I do not have the time for that. Best sports games. I gave up on sports games a long time ago. Best multiplayer. So Among Us or Call of Duty Warzone. Hmm. It's interesting that Among Us beats Warzone here. But I mean... Who cares about this, right? They're both two very popular games. Now, Content Creator of the Year. Nick Marks didn't get it. Tim Tatman didn't get it. Valkyrie. Now, I know Valkyrie is a very popular uh, Among Us streamer. She streams a lot with uh, this guy's toast. So, yeah... I mean, she gets lots of views. Nick Merckx has had a massive explosion with the release of Warzone, as has Tim the Tatman, of course. Two great streamers on Warzone. Um, Alana Pierce, I follow a lot. She's a fantastic games journalist. Uh, if you're interested in gaming news, follow Alana Pierce. She's one of the best game journalists out there right now. Highly, highly recommended. Best debut game. Hmm, interesting. So I've played Mortal Shell. It was a very good game, but I haven't played any of these other games. Mortal Shell was a good game, but it had a lot of problems and I couldn't complete it. Just too buggy. Crimp6 didn't win the best esports athlete. That's a surprise. Okay. Esports coach, who the hell cares? Esports events, who the hell cares? Best esports game. I guess League of Legends deserved this. Although I would have thought Valorant would have won it for its first year. Seems like Valorant was a completely focused about its esports and best esports host. Who the hell cares? Best esports team, yeah, sure, G2, and that's it. So, those are the winners. So, definitely disagree on a lot of them, especially disagree on this one. The game of the year, which did go to The Last of Us Part 2. I thought, of course, that Ghost of Tsushima should have won that. So there we are, that's the Game of Awards 2020 discussion.